Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would talk about some interesting stuff, uh, looking at the last updates and then also the previous ones, and giving an idea of what we're going to see in the future when it comes to War Thunder. There's been a lot of talk about, of course, what jets are going to come, because uh, as always, when it comes to updates, Kajin like to leave in little teasers here and there, and the big one that they left in was the Swedish aircraft and also the British aircraft getting some new top tier stuff. We'll do another video looking at those in the future, but obviously the Gripen is a big contender and also the Eurofighter turning up as well. But one that I wanted to think about today was more uh, kind of part of an idea instead of just the vehicle itself. So we're going to do a video later on in the week about the Hornet, uh, the good old FA-18, the twin-engine supersonic combat jet from, of course, McDonnell Douglas. Now, the vehicle itself, uh, the reason why we're looking at it today, is not necessarily because of its capabilities or how it would change the game, but because of how War Thunder has been setting itself up over the last few updates. There was a Q&A which was done um, a little bit ago, basically talking about the economy and talking about how and what people play in War Thunder, and the vast majority of people pretty much only play one or two nations. And uh, what that basically means is one or two things. Either the grind is way too hard, which could definitely be the case, or the second one is people are drawn to those nations because either they're the best, nationalistic uh, intrigue, or at the same time, uh, just feel like they just want to play one nation and leave everything else out. This, for me, has led me to a conclusion that adding more independent trees is probably not a great idea um, without even thinking about all of the other reasons why you wouldn't add them. You know, the balance issues, the lack of lineups issues, so on and so forth. And so it's always been better uh, to put in sub-tech trees instead of just full independent tech trees. But what this leads to is something that we're starting to see when it comes to the major updates. Now, if we go back to when uh, good old China was added, the same updates where the MiG-21 F-13 and then also the F-4C was added, we saw the trend there, but it was only for one specific nation. Now, if you have a look at the last few updates, what you'll start seeing is a trend creeping in, uh, which has turned up. And this is the idea of kind of copy-paste vehicles across nations. So, for example... You have, of course, Germany and Sweden with the HE-115 and then, of course, the T-2. Now, these vehicles are slightly different. They have slightly different bomb loads. They have slightly different defensive armaments, but they're basically the same. Then, of course, you have the F-16C Block 50 and the F-16D Block 40 Barak 2 for Israel and US. Once again, pretty much the same vehicles, but slightly different. And then you just have some straight copy-paste. The 2S1, for example, being in the Soviet tech tree and also being in the Italian tech tree. You have the Chaparral, which once again is slightly different because of its modifications, but basically the same. And then also you have the Leopard 2 PSO, which is just kind of a copy of the 2A5 with a bit of add-on chemical protection. And same with the Leclerc Azur. And even if you want to go into other places, you know, you have the Challenger 2 Tez, the Challenger 2 2F, and then, of course, just the standard Challenger 2. Uh, then you have the M1A2 uh, Abrams, the M1A2 SEP, and then all of these. So you're getting copies on copies on copies with sometimes slight differences, just like the TKXP, which they just added in for Japan. And this is what War Thunder's future kind of looks like, whether it be the ZSU-57-2 or the Shilka or the BTR-80A or the T-72M1 or the Leopard 2A4 in the Hungarian tree, which are all copies of other nations, uh, this is what the future is like, whether it be, you know, the MI-24s in the Italian helicopter tree, or the MI-8TB in the MI-8TV in the Soviet or German tech tree, or even for the US and China, the OH-58Ds, which have come in. You're going to get a bunch of slight variants of different vehicles, which are coming two different nations. The only actual unique part of this update was surprisingly the Blue Water stuff, or, or the naval stuff in general, and even then uh, they threw in some premiums, which were just copies of other vehicles which were already in the game, with slightly different refits. So, pretty much what you end up with is a bunch of vehicles, and it looks really impressive, right? Like, there's a ton of vehicles being added in this update, but if you actually boil it down and remove those ones which are copy-paste, 
there isn't actually a metric ton compared to what we've seen previously. And this trend is only going to continue. The reason why this trend is here in the first place is because as we go forward in history, stuff becomes much more homogenized. Stuff becomes much more kind of centered around specific ideas. The, obviously, the American industrial complex takes over, the same with like the Soviet one, up to a point, and a bunch of nations don't have the domestic capacity for making their own vehicles, nor do they want it, uh, at least when it comes to some vehicles. So what ends up happening is a lot of these vehicles uh, just end up getting shared around. And for example, as we actually have a look at the FA-18 again, uh, just as one of these vehicles, you have, of course, the standard Hornet and, of course, the Super Hornet, uh, with the Super Hornet just being a massive modification of it. But operator-wise, uh, for these vehicles, you have, of course, the United States Navy, uh, which uses the Hornet and the Super Hornet. Then you've got the Marines, uh, which use it too. Then the Australians use it. Uh, then also the Canadians, the Malaysians, the Finnish, the Kuwaiti, the Spanish, and also the Swiss. So, looking at this vehicle, depending on what happens with subtrees in the future, let's say that Swiss goes to France, it might go to Germany too, let's say Spain goes to Germany, since, you know, uh, we actually do have some Spanish vehicles in the German tech tree, also in the Italian tech tree, so that could be there, but let's just say Germany for now. So, this Hornet could be in the American tech tree, also the British tech tree with the Australians and the Canadians in two separate forms, by the way, so the Hornet and the Super Hornet. And then you could also have it in the Swedish tech tree because there's a Finnish one. You could have it in the German tech tree because it's a Spanish one or the Italian tech tree because there's a Spanish one. And then also it could be in the French tech tree under the Swiss uh, one. So you can see how just this one vehicle, it could actually have eight variants, which all basically will play the same but they will give each person a something to grind. And this has to kind of trigger the mind a bit, right? And not in a negative way, but just to try and think about some ideas. So for me, as a person, I play pretty much every nation. And one of the issues that I've run into is that I have got tired of playing and spading the same vehicles over and over and over again. It's got to that point finally after about 10 years that unless the vehicle itself has massively different lineups and therefore plays very differently in them, I'm not too interested in playing them two times, but I'm also nowhere near interested in playing them five times, like in the form of like the ZSU 57.2. The way I play the ZSU-57-2 does not change depending on what nation I play it in because of what the vehicle is and how it works. So for me, looking at the uh, vehicles and looking at what's available, if this is the trend going forward, then I think this will actually probably force more people to play singular nations than actually spread their wings because there's less uniqueness to actually look forward to at the higher echelons. And therefore, they'll be like, well, I get all of my experiences of the game playing one of these nations. Why bother play the other ones? And who could be, who could be wrong? You know, who, who out of everybody there could disagree with that. I mean, the problem is that's true, technically, if all of the nations become the same, if they lose their special spice, which makes them individual and makes them, you know, interesting. One of the things we used to talk about back in the day was certain nations having access to kind of certain mechanics which made them unique, whether it was like the British AP or APDS or early stabilizers, whether it was, you know, uh, stuff like the German heavy guns that were around the place, the Soviet armor, the American kind of multi-role vehicles like the Sherman, um, you know, the 6-7 heavies, stuff like that, things that kind of sit there and make them what they are. And unfortunately right now, we're starting to lose that. It does mean that lineups are getting more balanced. It does mean that there's more coming in for everybody and everybody can be happy. But also at the same time, it means that everything feels the same. And if that's the case, you're going to see a lot less people venture out to try different tech trees because, well, people want different experiences. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, 
Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Bereen, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also LaFouche for supporting the channel.